Good afternoon. This has been a long, very productive day and everybody is surely feeling exhausted. Let me try to make this session as light, clear and concise as possible. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is David Mendes and I come from Portugal. You can call me David. I am a computer nerd working in healthcare informatics since 1987. Yes, I know, I have a lot of experience in healthcare informatics. Currently, I am very much interested in the application of machine learning to give the clinicians a lift of their heavy burden. But especially, my intention is to improve the general population's quality of life. Have we reached a turning point in the applicability of AI to medicine? and particularly in its acceptance by the professionals? The field of AI, artificial intelligence, is experiencing a new reborn because of new capabilities of modeling and reasoning. I'm talking about deep learning applied to real world activities. In recent years, due to the technologic advances of several conquering technologies, we witness a new type of clinical decision support system. These are usually known as integrative decision support systems. This kind of clever assistance take advantage of all the hype of the moment techno novelties that are already in place for most of the industries like smartphones, I mean mobile computing, IoT, the Internet of Things, and the remote health conditions monitoring possibilities that it brings. AI, now more commonly known as machine learning, due to the rise of big data and the applications of deep learning and reinforcement learning applied to personalized medicine and healthcare. These have all converged to the dawn of IDSS, Integrative Decision Support Systems, that act as decision assistants by their ability to reason about the personalized health conditions while aware of all the applicable guidelines as well as the latest scientific evidence. They actively monitor heterogeneous data sources and keep track of the personal health digital twin. These rule-based decisions that are suggested are capable to evolve from manually defined decision rules to consensus automated machine learning algorithms based in active reinforcement learning by usage of the systems and its outcomes. And then when the clinician, the professional, uses the, the decision, decisions suggested, the machine, by reinforcement learning, gives back the decisions and its outcomes to the underlying systems. These are continuously functioning and alert every clinically significant event and suggest for action. When the professional forms a decision, it returns info back to the systems. Thus, reinforcing the underlying knowledge about actions and outcomes. These are the shareable clinical pathways. Clinical pathways, as you know, are standardized clinical decisions along a care process. To represent guidelines in a shareable form, every encoding 
workflow representation and decision ruling must be standardized. All these must be subject to standards. The object management group has been fostering this effort since ever. For decades, since the object programming paradigm has arrived, they have developed the BPM Plus group of correlated standards, being the BPMN, business process model notation, where with process diagrams, we define the clinical pathways graphically, the case management model notation that we can use for personal, personalized patient care for instructed pair processes. But lately, the decision model notation that provides decision trees with decision tables, equations showing and explainable and graphically explainable decisions. These are what we call, not me, but the group, the shareable clinical pathways. We use this guidance when developing our work. Clinical pathways are initially co-designed with clinicians, administrative staff, and IT people into a shareable domain specification. Let me show you an example. This is taken, extracted from an ambulatory carriage pathway and illustrates some decision points. Here we have one decision point and here another decision point. This was graphically designed and each decision point has a decision model and a standard decision table. These decision tables are initially inserted by co-creation with all the stakeholders that I, I mentioned before in rules that are uh, developed and inserted manually and they are inserted to uh, an implementation that must be effective for real-time monitoring and for decision support. It uses a knowledge graph and uses different BPM plus artifacts, annotates them, and then generates assets with metadata into the knowledge graph. It is running very fast because it's based on a knowledge database for persistent and very fast rule eliciting. It is bootstrapped by importing realistic ontologies into a data set of RDF, resource description framework triples. For every decision point in the pathway, as we have seen before, all the decision hyperparameters, and here I am using the deep learning term, are initially inserted for that clinical guideline as a rule. They are inserted using the standard fill language. This way, the clinical guidelines and pathway are shareable and understandable and explainable. Every decision point also has one clinical decision support hook. This is model, both the hook and the model for every decision point, as we've seen before, and uses these international open standards, which are both these two, the CDS hooks, and the triple crown models. Uh, uh, as you know, OMG standards, acting with a FIRE standard, which is, as you know, an HL7 uh, interoperability standard. So the black box model 
has the hyperparameters defined initially influencing the decision. The decision table renders as an explanation of all the parameters influence. As you've seen in the integrative decision support system, the suggestion is presented to the healthcare professional and he or she can act accordingly, triggering the action, either through a manual process or by triggering the CDS hook and triggers uh, automatic processes. The information of the action taken is rendered back to the electronic health registry and to the knowledge base reinforcing the model. The model is continuously reinforced by usage of the, the system, the integrated decision support system itself. Thus, all the CDS hooks are triggerable as using fire. So it's a mostly automatable uh, system. We can automate the different partners system because these are not the hospital's um, only uh, systems triggerable, but also in personalized healthcare from primary care to continued care and every level of, of integrative uh, continued care. Thus, going to the conclusion, machine learning is capable of explaining those decisions. Using the standards, these are explainable both through decision tables and the field expressions. And the field expressions are fine-tuned by the usage of the integrative decision support system. So we take a clinical pathway manual representation into an artificial intelligence driven model that can still explain to the health professional or to the patient or to informal care of the family the reasons of any decision in their individualized care path. The caregivers feel a strong relief in their chores completion, leading to burnout eviction, which is nowadays much needed. So wrapping up, initially the rules are inserted through co-creation and we design our clinical guidelines in a shareable form. Those are already explainable. And while the IDSS is used, it is continuously improving by reinforcement learning. Decisions regularly made by clinicians further refine the black box model. So decisions suggested become more effective, but still remain explainable. So the conclusion in my point of view is that the capability of clearly explain decisions and justify them are the major force for full AI adoption in the healthcare practice. So this is probably a turning point to make the artificial intelligence adoption in the point of care. Everybody please stay safe in these perturbed times. Thank you very much.